Sparrow. Welcome to another edition of Secrets of the Supernatural. Tonight, we have a very special program. Tonight, we have a gentleman, special guest, that actually had an encounter with what we refer to as the White Lady of Union Cemetery in Easton, Connecticut. His name is Rod Vesey. He's an eyewitness to the White Lady and to another spirit that actually visited him in his vehicle on the way home one night from work. I'd like to start out with Ed and Lorraine and then get to Rod. This is a very exciting program. You're going to love it tonight. Ed, can you just fill us in really yeah, quick on the, the White, White Lady? The White Lady uh, has often been seen in and around Union Graveyard, Route 59, and as far over as Stephanie Graveyard in Monroe. But we've been getting reports uh, for the past 20-some years of people who claim that they've seen a lady in white going along, you know, on the road out there in the cemetery. And Lorraine and I decided that since all these reports were coming in, that we would investigate it. And I stayed in that graveyard for seven nights. I'd leave the house around midnight. I'd go to the graveyard in my van, park the van, and I'd open up the doors. It was hot, it was July. August, uh, actually this was August. Yeah, it was the end of and July. I'd open up the van to sit back and I'd see all these ghost lights flitting all over the place. And I thought sooner or later something's going to happen. And on September 1st of 1990, I believe it was, mm -hmm. at uh, 2.40 in the morning, you told me. In the morning, that's right. I'm sitting there and I could see all these lights over near the Baptist Cemetery, all around the stone wall. And all these thousands and millions of insects were just chirping away. All of a sudden, things started to quiet down. And I could hear what sounded like a woman weeping. I picked up my camera. I had a camcorder alongside of me. And I had the tripod set up outside. I didn't want to leave the camera out there because of the humidity. I took the camera out, and I could see all these ghost lights suddenly forming into a figure mm -hmm. of a woman. Now, the film that I took of, of this spirit looks as though it's very far away. Actually, it was very close to me. It wasn't that very far away. And I put the camera up to my eye, and I let it go, and I couldn't see anything. I took my eye away, and I could see her. I immediately put the camera on the tripod and let it run, and I started to walk toward her as she was coming towards me, mm -hmm. and she disappeared. Now, I knew I shouldn't do that, so I backed up again, and she came back into focus. At that point, she started to come towards me, moving through the tombstones, and these black things, which I can only describe as looking like, kind of like black poodles, were jumping up against her. We call these here wood ghosts or shadow ghosts. And they were trying to stop her from getting to me. Now, all this is taking place, you understand, in just a minute or two. And then she moves towards me and moves away, and this huge shadow ghost pushed her towards Route 59, and that was it. I packed up the camera real quick. I ran home in the car, ran home. I drove home. I woke Lorraine up and I said, you're not going to believe what happened. We put it on the VCR and there it was. I had captured it. Now understand that this is something that I had been looking forward to for 50 years. I had see, seen pictures taken of ghosts, photographs taken of ghosts. I had seen ghosts, but I had never had a video camera with me and the opportunity to get this on film, which I did. Now, Rod Veshi's experience was different than mine, and I'll let Rod tell that one. Okay, Rod. Uh, when I had my experience with the white lady, I think it was a month or two before yeah. you got her on film. Mm -hmm. I was coming home from work. I was working in Fairfield at the time, and it was about 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm driving home. I would just gotten off of work. I was wide awake, all wound up. And uh, got up to Sport Hill Road in 59 where it crosses. There was a slight mist on the road. Mm -hmm. The road was a little damp and, you know, fog about maybe a foot high. Yeah. It wasn't unusual for the area. Uh, got up, came up the hill a little bit. And as I came up the hill coming up past the cemetery, I felt like someone was on my right side. Mm -hmm. And I looked over, and there was a person, just like Ed, sitting here, that solid, sitting there and on a little brown scrunched up hat a little scruff on his face at the time I had no hair on my face I was clean shaving at the time so it definitely wasn't my reflection in the window 
I did one of those, looked forward, looked back. That figure was gone, and in front of me, I'd say a good 60, 70 feet in front of me, there was a woman standing in the road. Mm -hmm. I, I tapped on the brakes. I didn't jam them on because mm -hmm. the road was a little slick. Okay. And as soon as I tapped on the brakes, she went from about 70 feet out to right in front of the car, and the thing that I remember the most was her hand came up in a motion like that, like up and that way, sort of like she was not trying to grab me, but she was reaching out. Mm -hmm. And that figure, it didn't visually come right through the car, but it, it went through my car. If you can understand that, if you take your hand and wave it past your head, you feel a little breeze. That's you felt, a, it, you felt the breeze. Felt like. I don't know if I physically felt a breeze, but I felt something go by me. Like a whoosh like kind of thing? Exactly. And that, after that happened, I looked in the rearview mirror, there was nothing behind me, and in front of me, the road turned like a deep cranberry red, just my lane of the road. Now, that's up at the top, right across from the cemetery, and as you go back down the hill, there's an Episcopal church down there. When I got to that church, everything had disappeared. Um, got home, was all shaken up, woke my wife Pamela up, um, explained everything to her, and I was really nervous. I have two children, Kaylin and Marissa, at home, that I thought, you know, God, what if this thing followed me home? Is it right. going to be after my children? You're concerned. It was a week or two after that that...